Hi, I'm Daniel Robinson with Plumpy Thimble. I didn't understand that it was a cold war because there was no firefights until much later on in my life. And because of that, because of the time period that I was born in and my relative unconcern for events of the past, pop culture had done its thing by teaching me what the Cold War was. And what that was was essentially Red Dawn, The Hunt for Red October, Doctor Strangelove, Watchmen, uh, all of which should be pointed out had far more casualties and firefights than the actual Cold War itself. So I thought it was pretty neat to be able to take a look at a game that takes the events and just the, the whole tension surrounding that time period and puts it into a nice little box here. So buckle up, it's about to get cold in here. Yeah, that's dumb, that's a dumb line. So buckle up, it's about to get cold in here. In Iron Curtain from Jolly Roger Games and Ultra Pro, two players compete for influence over the globe. One player seeks to dominate as the USSR, and the other is the USA. The game plays over the course of two rounds. For the first round, players are dealt five cards. They'll play four of these cards, then each set the final card to the side. The second round, they'll each be dealt four cards, which will all be played. On a player's turn, they simply choose one card from their hand and place it on the table following some simple placement rules. In order to receive influence points, players must maintain control of as many countries as possible uh, by placing cubes on them. When a player plays a card, they consult the amount of cubes printed on that card and may then place them on or adjacent to their cubes already in play. If the card they choose to play has their own flag in the corner, they may choose to use the play effect instead of placing cubes. Timing is everything, however. If you play a card that has your opponent's flag in the corner, they get to use the play effect before you place cubes. As continents are played, areas are scored, and the influence tracker continues a tug of war throughout the game. If at any point one side reaches their end of the tracker, the game ends immediately. The flag and cubes of the cards left aside from the first round are compared, then each continent scores, sometimes for a second time in the game, and final points are awarded. Tension is a difficult little beast to capture, especially tension based on real-life events that you're attempting to abstract down to 15 minutes. What is less difficult to do, but still a commendable feat, is to flavor an experience with that realistic tension, and that, I believe, is what Iron Curtain has done. I've come to appreciate the intriguing themes and mechanisms that the Cold War has to offer to the gaming community. It has the power of history and the imagination of a great number of individuals that lived through that time. However, I'm in that ever-increasing demographic of people that remembers nothing about that time period from personal experience, and I think that makes this only slightly less compelling as it may be for someone just a little older than me. This in no way means that the events during that time are any less impactful on the future, it just means that I'm naturally going to be less engaged or emotionally involved in a theme that I didn't personally live through. As a gamer, that's fine, just about all the games on my shelf have me imagining scenarios that I've never experienced but I can't help but wonder how this affects my view of the game. In terms of gameplay, I don't really have any solid negatives. The rules are a little different than what a lot of non-gamers might be used to, but it's interesting and not difficult to understand once you take 10 minutes to figure it out. Also, the box size is pretty ludicrous for what it contains. Now, just because I don't remember anything about the Cold War doesn't mean I'm incapable of understanding the gravity of it. At the time of this review, the US and North Korea are in what feels like a Wild West quick draw stare down. However, before the internet and Twitter, world leaders relied even more on espionage, intelligence, and more toned down methods of international control. And therein lies the beauty of Iron Curtain. With each player having to play all of their cards, except the one in the first round, timing and finesse is everything. Sure, you can banter with table talk, but this is not a game of diplomacy. It's a game of reading the other player and playing cards when they will help you most and help your opponent least. That may mean allowing them to gain the upper hand for a period of time. The fact that you will be required to play cards that will certainly help your opponent is an elegant way to balance the push and pull of power. Sure, you may be forced into giving up your stronghold in South America, but you can bet the other side of the war is making just as tough a decision as you just did. I really like the scoring mechanism. The fact that sometimes you have to balance the score before going all out for it is great. There are really powerful cards that will only take effect if your opponent is winning. But if you overcompensate and let that go too far, you may never recover. Iron Curtain is short, sweet, and tense, which is the exact flavor it was going for. 
If you're interested in the theme, but this seems a little light for you, you're in luck because there's a whole bunch of highly regarded Cold War games that you probably already know about. But if you're looking for a quick fix for your political thriller cravings, Iron Curtain may just do the trick. <laughs> 